Namaste. I'm Vivek Govekar and welcome to my podcast. That was Zen. This is Tao. Uh, this is episode six and I'm going to talk about a little bit about what I have mentioned before, which is I saw the universe as vibrations as a result of my Kundalini awakening on the first day when it first awakened. Uh, the immediate experience was that of me being part of an energy, energy continuum and it's all made of vibrations. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about that because that has been the key to everything that follows in my process. Uh, the reason you see the world as vibrations is because that's how it is. If you look at physics, if, it's, if you look at the latest physical physics research, uh, string theory, which is everything is narrowed down to building blocks of energy which are pulsating strings. I'm not a scientist, uh, I'm not a physics scientist, I'm a, a more mundane pharmaceutical scientist who makes your Xantax and your, you know, uh, terms and chewables and stuff like that. But that's what physics states. Physics says that building blocks of the entire universe are these strings of energy. And here's the funny part. If you look at ancient literature, especially Kashmir Shaivism or Yoga Spandakarika, this is a Hindu text and Shaivism is a sect of Hinduism which is um, has its own philosophy that deviates a lot from traditional Hindu philosophy. But the, the crux is the same, it's all uh, one uh, philosophical way of uh, approaching this ascendancy to a higher state of uh, consciousness. Kashmir Shaivism states that the entire universe is made of vibration. However, the difference between string theory and Kashmir Shaivism is there is the scientist as an objective observer in any scientific field such as string theory and Kashmir Shaivism says that you experience this divinity, you experience the reality as vibrations and Shaivism obviously is a worshipping of Shiva. So Shiva is this entire universe. That is the postulation of Kashmir Shaivism. And since I awakened my Kundalini and saw vibrations, I decided to investigate in that direction and see, well, okay, so what does this mean? And how do you experience vibration? The first and most basic way of experiencing vibration is through music. This is so fundamental and basic that we don't even consider that vibration. But if you look at a plucked guitar string or any stringed instrument and you see the vibrating pattern of troughs and waves, well, the entire universe, if you look at atoms and go down to smaller levels, particles disappear and only waves of energy remain. So everything fundamentally is a vibration. Hinduism and Kashmir Shaivism approach this by saying everything comes from the sound. Even in the Bible it says the sound is everything and they use the word Amen. Uh, Hinduism uses the word Om. And all of that is the primordial vibration, the first vibration after the Big Bang. And the Big Bang is also a part of uh, many metaphysical traditions as well as what physics states may not exactly be equivalent, you cannot uh, tie science to uh, the metaphysics, but the origins of the universe from a nothingness with a big bang and then pulsating vibrations is a theme that has recurred through many other traditions before it became known as string theory. Uh, your experience of that comes through samadhi, which is a deep transcendent meditation, meditative state. And every yogi is trying to still the mind so that that state can be achieved. This physical reality can be transcended by the deeper reality within. Our outward projection into the physical world is this body and the consciousness associated with it. But the biology did not give rise to the consciousness. The consciousness causes the biology to project itself in a physical reality that seems real to touch. All it is, is vibration congealed to a slower pace. We all know that there is a solid state, there's a liquid state and a gaseous state. And all it is, is vibrating energy that's been slowed down to become a solid, 
then that for example ice melts into water which becomes a liquid state which is vibration that is even more unbound and free and gaseous state which is even more than that it is an even higher vibration so that same thing applies in the kundalini sense you have chakras that represent earth water fire and so on and so forth and goes upwards that way so that is how vibrations tie into the kundalini process and that is why the vibrating snake and all kind of pulsation that is felt and that's why you feel oneness with the universe uh, that theory of vibration tying into the human consciousness is what related to sound and how the chakras respond to sound and there's a fascinating theory behind that but that is for another episode thank you for listening